Thank, thank you very much, Chris. So we have some, some time for questions, and uh, we promise that we don't put your fingers inside the crocodile if you ask questions. Um, <laughs> we've got one microphone there that Fritz has, and I have another one that uh, I'll hand over to Nina now. So if you'd like to ask questions, please uh, raise your hand. Also, you can do it in advance so that we can bring the microphone to you. Uh, and then once you've got the microphone, it means that you are the next in line to, to ask a question. And um, uh, yes, then... Please take it away. <laughs> um, you should have listed hard problems, how to make microphones work. <laughs> um, but, but maybe the first question to, to get things kicked off is, um, I wanted to ask about the the, the human aspect of this. So say I, say I think I've come up with a new hard problem and I, I, I think it's great and I do some work and I show that I can find a, a, a trapdoor for it. Firstly, how do, how do I know that this is really a hard problem and then um, what, what can I do to try and convince the rest of the community? Is there some way I, I can just prove this or what sort of steps does that have to go through? Can you take us through that process? Yes, so... so um so when someone comes up with a, uh, this, I mean, uh, so so um, so when someone uh, comes up with a new suggestion for a hard problem, what we do is we we uh, so we cannot we cannot prove it's hard because uh, of this uh, p versus uh, uh, np barrier. Also, this uh, uh, um, uh, this is a little uh, theoretical. So saying that the, this uh, this would give practical security, or which exact practical security gives us is even more complicated. But what we do is we um, uh, we, uh, we we publish we publish a candidate, but usually we publish many candidates at the same time, and then we try to break each other's candidates. Um, so 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 uh, this is a standardization process that takes uh, a couple of years, um, but it starts out with uh, everyone being allowed to submit any candidate they want, and then there's the first round where uh, all the uh, submissions that were received are kind of uh, I mean everyone tries to break break the submissions of, of the others. And then those that are not uh, immediately broken, uh, they kind of, uh, they move to the second round. And uh, then we have uh, more rounds of this. Um, and and uh, there is like, a, you know, you, you might kind of, uh, I don't know, you might find, uh, you might break a proposal completely, uh, or you might find, say, you know, you, you, you have a pseudo-random generator and you have a little bit of bias. It's not, you know, it's like, uh, it's not really random. It's like there's one value that's more likely to be a one than a zero or something like this. Um, so, so then you discover more subtle uh, weaknesses. Um, this goes through another round, and uh, and eventually there is uh, uh, there, there are usually several candidates which are not broken, and we pick one of them for standardization. That's uh, yeah. Uh, unfortunately, we cannot prove anything. <laughs> Um, so, so, so this is. Uh, um, so, so I think it's a, it's a, I think it's a very, very good process because it's, it's, it's open. Everyone can submit. Everyone, it's, it's uh, the discussion is public. Everyone can uh, check what was proposed. Everyone can read the discussions of um, uh, the criticism, um, the attacks, and, and this public process is, uh, I think, also kind of the best uh, way to to address this protection against uh, against backdoors. Um, just like any new ideas of how to counterattack uh, the quantum computers in case they are like actually right around the corner, like any new yes. aspects. Uh, so, so, so yes. So, so, um, um, so what uh, the 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 real uh, um, um, uh, the candidates are based on are. Um, uh, a um, little bit more involved mathematics based on uh, based on encodings, based on lattices, and based on isogenies. So, so there are like three branches of uh, of, of, uh, of mathematics, um, each of them being fairly deep, <laughs> um, and uh, each of them having a different or related community uh, working on working on, on the mathematics behind it and on, on working on breaking these proposals. 
So um, uh, there is, if you uh, if you Google for um, uh, NIST post quantum competition, uh, you can see all the proposals that are um, kind of that have survived the first round. Uh, I wonder how much we know about the complexity of computing on quantum computers. I mean, uh, at least from the reductionist point of view and from the typical classes, we know quite a bit about Turing machine. How much do we know actually about quantum computations? Uh, so, uh, we, so, so, so the, the, the way in which uh, uh, quantum complexity relates to classical complexity, I, I think not that much is known. So when I, <laughs> when I, when I last checked the, the I mean, so, so, so it can solve, um, it can solve. Um, uh, so so um, okay. So so um, uh, there. Are, uh, okay there. Are, uh, so so quantum computers can factor in polynomial times. Factoring is in is in uh, uh, NP intersected co NP, which is a very low complexity class or fairly fairly low complexity class, but. Uh, it's it's not known that uh, uh, quantum computers can even solve all problems in there, which is very good because uh, all our public key encryption schemes they are based on problems which are <laughs> lie in there. Um, so so um, it, it seems that uh, of of uh, this complexity class they can only uh, solve a subset. Um, uh, how how high how high up um, quantum polynomial time goes is. Is, is not not very well not very well understood, and also also kind of uh, um, from a from a modeling aspect. So um, it's a uh, um, uh, quantum computer is um, uh, so, so it's Turing equivalent to, to a Turing machine, but but not uh, not polynomial. Uh, but or well, it, it seems it's not polynomial related. It could be. But uh, the model is also very, very strange with doing many things at the same time, whereas kind of the classical theory of computation says you should do local computation. Um, yeah. So uh, this uh, NP and P uh, are kind of related, they are, they are about uh, uh, upper bound on the complexity, and that's kind of what we learned in the uh, in computer science classes, uh, but then uh, you would probably like these problems to be uh, to be such that there is no easy instances of the problem. I don't know how fl how wide is the gap between like problems that have some difficult cases and and uh, like Sudoku, uh, and uh, then those where every case that every instance that you choose is difficult. Hey, I well I. Well, okay, yeah, yeah, okay, good, good. So, so uh, with, a, I mean, every, so it, it could have easy instances. It's just I don't choose them, right? This is so, so, so like you said, every every instance that I choose. So, so if I, if I have, you know, if I have a good sampler for a Sudoku, uh, hopefully the sampler would only choose uh, choose uh, good instances. Um, uh, so, so for at least for uh, for any cryptography that. That uh, that uh, that has a trapdoor, we're uh, kind of very far from getting uh, getting NP hardness. We have some negative results that show that that it's also very unlikely to get there. But also, uh, whenever someone um, proposes an assumption for uh, a trapdoor function, usually after a while, it's kind of uh, shown to be in in this class or a randomized version of this class. Uh, so so um, so uh, we. It, it seems that that uh, cryptographic problems are um, kind of um, easier to solve than NP-complete problems. But uh, then, hopefully, um, uh, once we understand this P versus NP question, we also understand these other complexity classes, and then then hopefully we can uh, we can still establish that these uh, uh, cryptographic problems are hard too. But this is uh, uh, I'm not sure any of us will. Uh, uh, will will be alive when when something like this will be proven. Yeah. So uh, have a, it, my question is a bit maybe more related to the quantum computing, but it is uh, that, for example, 
if we assume that the quantum computers are realized before we have hard enough problems for cryptography, so do you think it would affect the commercialization of the quantum computers because it might render the existing cryptographic uh, methods a bit insecure? So, I mean, so, yeah, so, so we, we do have candidates for post-quantum secure cryptography. It's just a bit s slow still. So it's not yet as fast as the things that, uh, that we currently run in our systems. Um, so, 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 and 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 we try to get those things to be uh, to be really, really fast because because people get very annoyed if you know if you if you 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 click on something it takes a second to load, a second is very long, and and it's very likely that if it just takes a second to load, people think oh there's an error I'm I'm, I'm not going to to visit those sites so so we are we are we're spoiled by now, um, essentially getting cryptography. Uh, for 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 free in terms of of, of our time, um, getting encryption in, in in no time whatsoever, and and post quantum cryptography is not yet there. Um, but uh, but uh, sorry, uh, there was a second question which I didn't answer, which was, can you remind uh, me? Yeah, the uh, second question was that if we as we don't have the post quantum cryptography realized yet, so would it affect the production of the quantum computers or their commercialization? or maybe the governments uh, trying to keep the quantum computers from going public somehow so that the existing communication protocols are not rendered insecure? Would it affect their production? I, I guess it's possible? a reasonable consideration <laughs> to, to, uh, um, to, to slow down development of uh, quantum computers and, until uh, we're, we're happy with our real-world systems. I, mean, I, I cannot tell you whether it will happen, but uh, I think it's a very reasonable consideration. That's a fantastic question, and I have spent years thinking about it. Um, I, I mean, so, so the 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 the, um, uh, the answer is because we don't know how to do that. Oh, okay. So so um, uh, so 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 the question was, uh, well, if if uh, kind of uh, if if uh, uh, if if uh, problems that are NP complete, if we um, uh, in the worst case, if we um, if we actually, I mean, if we, we understand best that those problems are very likely to be hard, why don't we base cryptography on the worst case hardness of these problems that are NP complete? And, um, and, and the answer is that, uh, um, that we don't know how to do this. And, uh, and the, the reason why we don't know how to do this is um, if there exist some hard instances, it might also be the case that it's hard to find those hard instances. Um, so this is a, this is a, a world that uh, Russell and Pagliazzo called Pessiland, because if it's the case that uh, um, that uh, uh, it's um, it's uh, uh, it's it's hard to find, uh, it's it's. Uh, uh, um, it's it's hard to find uh, it's hard to find uh, the the um, uh, these. Uh, I uh, don't know. No. This, is, this is not yet pestilent. Anyway, but uh, but it's uh, so so if it's if it's hard to find those instances, then we don't get the average case hardness that we need for cryptography because for cryptography we need to generate hard instances over 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 and over and over again. It's not enough to just find uh, find find some of them. So we really need to be able to generate them at random. And NP hardness only tells us that they exist, but not how to find them. As this is one gap, the second gap is that even if we're able to generate hard instances, if we're able to generate hard instances, generating hard instances with a solution, so or you know like uh, 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 generating a solved problem such that we can get a, a, a hard problem from it, um, we don't know how to uh, how to how to move from average cases 
uh, case hardness to this uh, average case hardness where we also embed the solution. Um, and, and so the pestilent version is the version where um, on the average all problems are hard, but we still cannot uh, uh, come up with one-way functions. <laughs> Yeah, because uh, yeah, this would be a case where we cannot solve. Uh, so, so if p is equal to np, that would be amazing uh, for everyone who's not a cryptographer um, and who doesn't want to communicate securely. Oh well. Um, but uh, so, so if p is equal to np, that that would mean that we can solve uh, uh, many of uh, uh, many in interesting problems uh, efficiently. Um, uh, and even if, if, if you know, if, if, if some hard instances exist, but you know, we, we very rarely encounter them. If we can solve uh, NP problems on the average, uh, this would still be very, this would still be fantastic. Um, but if uh, 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 on the average all problems are still hard, but we still don't have one-way functions, then this would be a very bad case because it would mean we don't have cryptography and we cannot solve uh, uh, problems in practice. So, so that this would be a very, very. That this would be kind of the the worst outcome of uh, this uh, uh, p versus np uh, question research. Um, uh, but, but well, let's let's not hope that's true. <laughs> so, suppose it is the. Suppose it turns out that p equals np, so uh, is it known if there exists some hard enough problem, <coughs> say that you could find a solution in complexity n to the 1000? Yeah, 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 yeah. That, that's, a, that's a very good question. So, so um, uh, this, is, uh, this is currently, um, uh, it's an excellent question because it's currently one of the most lively uh, research areas in, in, in complexity theory. It's called the fine fine grained uh, complexity, and the the goal is to um, to uh, to come up um, to come up with problems relatively efficiently. Say I don't know in linear time or quadratic time or cubic time, but then say uh, to have uh, to solve it, you need uh, n to the one thousand time, and this gap and this this gap this gap seems seems reasonable to build a practical system, I guess. Um, so the answer is we don't know. So we don't know how to build a fine-grained one-way function. It's a great open question in uh, the foundations of cryptography. Uh, um, there, are, there are many people thinking about it. Um, so, so maybe kind of by uh, um, uh, in, in, in two years or so we have a good candidate for a fine-grained one-way function. Um, the nice thing about this is that, that uh, one, uh, one might be able to prove something about it without you know, without touching this question. Um, and that's also why uh, fine-grained complexity is so popular currently, because you, you could, you know, you could, sol you could, sh you could potentially show interesting, uh, interesting complexity gaps without uh, touching this question, um, but still understanding something about this question or going towards this question. Uh, say we have these uh, problems we believe to be hard, uh, like factoring or discrete logarithm. Uh, what are the, are there, uh, what kind of reasons are there to, to believe that they are hard, other than saying that no one has been able to solve them for 40 years? Do you know if there's, uh, uh, is there any other reason to believe that they are hard to solve? No. Yeah. <laughs> so. So, so, so it's it's. Uh, I mean, so so um, uh, uh, so so um, uh, I, I think so so uh, a good sign a good sign for a hard problem is if uh, if many people have studied it, if it has been studied if in in different areas of uh, um, of, of of mathematics, if, if different communities have looked at it, and so um, I, I would say factoring has been studied. Uh, for very, very, very long time, um, so so that makes it a good problem, unless there are quantum computers. Um, 
So, um, so uh, uh, lattice-based uh, cryptography and code-based cryptography, um, yeah, I think has been studied for 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 thirty years. Um, yeah. Maybe more, but no, like 20, 20, it's more around 20. So this is a much, much shorter time. Um, um, uh, but I think that's the best we can do. Have people with, with different backgrounds look at, uh, look at the problem. Hi, uh, thanks for your presentation, it was very inspiring. Um, do you think that other applications of encryption, like blind signatures or zero knowledge proofs, for example, uh, are they like the um, the encryption mechanism are taken from the same pool, or they follow like a different path to like ensure that yeah confidentiality is maintained also for like the the ones operating on the data? So like, do they belong to the same class of uh, let's say encryption mechanism, or they they follow some other? different rules? Well, um, okay, so uh, I think one-way functions are not enough to build blind signatures, but they are enough to build zero-knowledge proofs for all languages in NP. Um, uh, one-way functions, okay, so one-way functions are not enough to build blind signatures, but the trapdoor functions are enough to build blind signatures, I don't know. Um, but uh, but one-way functions, at least there is a negative result saying that it's very hard to build blind signatures from uh, from from one-way functions. Um, but so so um, uh, but but so um, uh, um, uh, um, one-way functions. They are if we have one-way functions, we can uh, build pseudo-random generators. We can build symmetric encryption scheme. We can schemes. We can build message authentication schemes. So all of these things, um, they are. Um, they are equivalent, they could uh, potentially use uh, the same assumptions. Usually one doesn't use exactly the same assumptions because one gets some efficiency gain by kind of uh, building something, uh, something from scratch. And as we cannot, uh, you know, as we cannot uh, prove, uh, as we cannot prove that something is a one-way function anyway, um, uh, using a problem from scratch is, is, uh, seems so, I mean, there's, there, it's also not clear what, to, what theoretical objection to, to, to make against this, except that uh, uh, a one-way function is a, is a simpler object, it's easier to study, so if you have a one-way function, you probably um, understand it better than if you build a pseudo-random function from scratch, but uh, uh, you know, going from a one-way function to a pseudo-random function and using it in a real-life system seems, uh, um, seems not a reasonable uh, thing to do. Of course, the system would be very slow. Um, so, so I, I don't know whether this answers your, your question. So, unless there's any uh, final burning question, maybe we, we bring the, the evening to, to a close. Thank you for all of the, the good questions. So, um, right, so first, uh, a, couple of, a couple of words of thanks. Um, first, first and foremost, uh, thank you very much, Chris, for a really, really interesting talk. Um, both slides and, and whiteboard. I certainly learned something this evening. And uh, we'd like to invite Nina to give you a small token of, of our appreciation. Thank you, Chris. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Something, something from Finland to Yeah, well, thank to you say, very much. And, and also, so, so um, uh, uh, thanks for uh, providing these uh, whiteboards, uh, oh, <laughs> short term. <laughs> yes, uh, th <laughs> thank you to, uh, to everybody who helped Fritz and Arsene. Yeah, so, so, so one, of, one of them was uh, comes straight from the CS building uh, before the lecture, so. And, and has to go back to the, the <laughs> it's, CS It's very building. much appreciated. <laughs> And, um, and so, and then a, a few other thanks. First and foremost, uh, to the Alto University School of Science, their sponsorship makes these these events possible. Um, thank you to Nina, who's helped to coordinate and and organise everything. And finally, thank you to all of you for for coming and for asking questions and um, being part of our our initiative. Uh, we would like to to spread this more broadly, so we will have future hike talks. Um, we can hopefully send you a mail after this to tell you when our next talk will be. Uh, the date is not yet confirmed, but I can give you a teaser that the topic will be about cybercrime in the skies, 
uh, fraudulent airline tickets and how many people fly without paying for them. Um, so look out for, for emails about that. And um, feel free to, to stay afterwards and uh, network a little bit. I'll be around and the professors and, and Nina. I believe Chris has to head off pretty quickly. But otherwise, thank you very much for coming and see you next time. Good night. Thank you.